Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to you as well for mm. this n new podcast. Yeah, new podcast. Um, People what... call it the Falcon Paladin Hour, if that's okay with you. Oh, you wanted to change the name? Uh, yeah, let's change it to the Falcon Paladin Hour. Okay, done. I, I approve. All right. All right. I was expecting a little bit of a pushback from you, but I'm glad we can agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. Uh, and see, that's the dramatic reenactment of what happened like three years ago when we named the podcast. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it was a longer discussion than that, but not by much. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this may very well just be the Falcon Talks About Cyberpunk for an Hour podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which we did for like an hour yesterday as well. Just like, but we didn't cover nearly everything. Not even close. There's so much, but we did. Yes. Oh, did we not? Did we not? Cover nope. It? Is there more? Oh my gosh! There's so much more. Oh. There's so much more. Okay, so bottom line, let's see how we did this. Uh, I managed to get a GT, an RTX 2080 Super. Off of Amazon for retail, even though it's an 18-month-old card, I played most of the campaign on that. Mm -hmm. uh, most of most of my time, probably 80% of the time I spent in Cyberpunk was on that. And then the last 20% was with a uh, 3080 I was able to acquire thanks to some uh, friend of a friend situations. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I'm not entirely... There we go. See, Lion Cat's here. Lion Cat knows what's up. Thanks, man, again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like you, you, you brought I it up. I summoned him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. summoned him. I didn't even need to remind you to be like, hey, say thanks publicly. <laughs> like, you just... Yeah, yeah. You were just like, I need to give this guy a shout out. I, I didn't know he would be here, but I'm certainly glad that he is. Anyway, thanks again. That's fantastic. Was able, like, was able to purchase a 3080 for retail price, which... It's stupid that requires special favors right now, but that's the world that we live in. It's really dumb. Mm. Oh. Anyway, it's nice. I appreciate it immensely. It is, I want to say, 10% prettier with a 3080 compared to the, the 2080 Super. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you're one of those crazy people that can't tell if like something's running at 30 FPS, can you? So uh, it, it might be running smoother and you just don't know. No, because I have the FPS counter on, and when I was running with the 2080 Super, I would get uh, dips below 40 FPS from time to time, and it's very noticeable. Mm -hmm. But that went away so with the, the better product? The, yeah, the 3080 with the settings turned up much higher, I mean, just higher, all the way up, basically, uh, psycho and everything that I can. Uh, it will go into the 40s sometimes, but it's running at 60 the vast majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm so that's my, a difference too. Here's my yeah. 1080, 1080 and I've got everything on the lower. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I am aware. A very, it's a, yeah. Well, at least you can play the game. That's good, that's I guess. That's true. Yeah. I can play the game. If you're not on like an Xbox One. <laughs> yeah. Or a PlayStation 4, that'd be horrific. Oh, yeah. Faux show. Sure. Would not want to be yeah. on PlayStation 4. No. Anywho. Also, the other thing is that the 3080 runs and doesn't sound like it's going to die. Like the 2080 <laughs> Super was like, please just put me out of my misery. And the 3080 is like, we're going to be, a, we're going to run. You can hear the fans, but it doesn't sound like death. So that's good. Mm. Anywho. All right. So here's how this worked. Played through it. Did every side quest, every mission in the game. Mm. Took me about, well, every mission I could find on the map that was mm. marked with an exclamation mark in the game. Uh-huh. Uh, took me about... 70, 75 hours, something around there. Okay. And it was great. I mean, I had some time off work, and so I literally just played it like 10 to 12 hours a day, if not more than that. Mm. Uh, met, it was a lot of cyberpunk. I met 62 hours of playtime, and I've barely scratched the, the, the story. Uh, yeah. I am basically slightly far, further out than what we saw in the like E3 footage two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen I'm, slightly more story than that. I'm not convinced there's a whole lot more for you to do, to be honest with you at this point, but we'll see. That's the thing. The story, there's not a ton of main story here. Not mm. really. Okay. I, I don't know. I Okay, so I enjoyed it a lot. I wanted to play it. I think I talked about this in a cast recently, but... Uh, I was like, I don't want to stop playing this game and cast Starcraft, which is weird because there's very few things where I'm like, it's time to cast. Mm -hmm. Aww. 
I don't want to stop doing this thing. It's like, I like casting StarCraft. It's fun. If I didn't like it, I would have stopped a long time ago. Right. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. So I like it. But this is the one one thing that's like, I want to keep playing Cyberpunk. It's, it's just really fun. It's so here's. Mm, yeah. So anyway, it's fine. I'm not going to spoil anything about the ending. I thought the ending was fine. Uh, nothing mind blowing. Nothing suck. It was okay. Okay. There are multiple endings, which I have looked into a little bit, but not really spoiled myself on because I want to see if I can get a different ending with my next playthrough. That's the other thing, is I am playing through it again. I did choose a female V this time, a street kid this time, mm -hmm. and I am playing through the campaign again. Okay. So I'm going to be complaining about a lot of stuff here, but, but, Go. but, but, let me tell you, Go I'm, gonna, I'm playing it for a second time, and that says a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So everything. Two points. Number one. If you view this as kind of a Far Cry game, right? This is Far Cry 3. This is Far Cry 4. This is Far Cry 5. It's a very good Far Cry game. Okay. It's a very good run around, do side missions that are all well written. There's good characters out there. You get to blow people up and set them on fire and do creative ways to murder them. Mm -hmm. And then there's a story that you do and then it's the end. Okay. Right? And you're playing a character. You don't, And you don't really get much choice. In the Far Cry games, you are who you are. You don't get to determine who you are. Right? You're just going uh, through. It's on rails for the most part that way. Yes, but I would say in the Far Cry games, you're more of a pair of pants. Like your character is significantly less personal than this like than v is right like v is a written yes. character you have lines a lot of like what i remember from far cry is people talking at you and then you agreeing to do the stuff right truth so there is more personality with v but you can't really change what that personality is right 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 you just you are who you are there are some choices in dialogue that they give you but they don't really mean anything for the story or for your character at all it's true yeah okay um so that's that's one thing. If you view it as this, it's incredibly fun. Start to finish, it will feel great. You'll have a ton of fun doing it. It will be great. Um, the problems come if you start looking too closely at things. So if you just want to enjoy Cyberpunk, maybe stop listening at this point. <laughs> because if you just play it in the way that it's intended, just go mission to mission to mission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all well-written stuff. The characters are all very good. I enjoyed all of it. The writing was fantastic. I keep saying that, but it is great. Enjoy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then if you start looking closer, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that you can choose to be a street kid, a nomad or a corpo when you make your character. Mm -hmm. They are presented as different characters. Yes. Would you say so? Uh, no. I mean, the, the, Represented as different backgrounds, which should have impacts on how the game is played or the story that unfolds. Yeah. Like they're presented as three distinct paths, but yes, not correct. as not as different V's. Like as different no, someone no, no, other no. than V, right? Like this is V, this is D, and this is XX sixty nine X, right? This is this is V with different life experience and backstory. They're a different right. person. Not right. not entirely different, but different. Yeah. Sure. And I think that's important what you said, too, about the path. They're on a different path. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I did a deep dive in the, into the Cyberpunk uh, subreddit today. I looked at stuff from before it was launched and then stuff right after it was launched and stuff today. And it's just there are people who, like, spent an hour staring at that screen. Do I want to be a nomad? I kind of want to see what the corpo is like. <laughs> yeah. I want, mm, street kid's cool. Hmm. To realize and like, they're just, none of it matters. None of it matters! None of it matters. If whatever you choose, you get 15 minutes of kind of class specific questing. Mm -hmm. And then you get a montage of mm -hmm. six months of living in Night City. And then it's the same spot. Mm -hmm. You are the same person from that point on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's Street Kid. I think the only one they managed to get in here is Street Kid. What do you mean? Just based on how V talks, both the female and the male variants... Mm. Um, it feels street kiddish. They use the slang. Um, uh. Nomad kind of works, but the corpo that you are before the montage and the corpo you are after six months of hanging out with Jackie is a very different corpo. Uh, he okay. speaks differently. 
Okay. So you you anyway. pick up all the chumbas and the gunks off to the, hanging out with Jackie. Yes, that's the intention, I okay. suppose. But the point is, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like that, when you're a corpo, you get, from what I understand, you get like a flying car, but then you lose it all because. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I guess you get mugged in a bar and they like take all your stuff and you get fired from your job and they dump you on the street and then Jackie's family takes you in and now you're a street person. Like that's it. Like it just completely wipes everything corporal about you. It's amazing. Huh. Okay. <sighs> I kind of feel anyway. like picking street kid first uh, was the best option then. <laughs> yeah, that probably was. Oh. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know. That's a problem. I just don't present what makes you a street person. Oh, so we're just talking about cyberpunk. So basically, um, no matter how, no matter what you choose as your backstory, you end up as a street kid, someone who is streetwise in all the ways. So regardless, it doesn't matter. It's true. Um, I did the nomad initially, mm -hmm. and it's you know it's fifteen minutes to pick up this package and deliver it somewhere, and then now we're in six month montage night city. Right. Right. A lot of people, a lot of people are complaining and they were wishing that we could play the montage. Cause here's the thing. They used the <laughs> montage in trailers for cyberpunk to be uh -huh. like, look how awesome this game is. Uh -huh. And then for them to be like, here's the trailers. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> you put that in the trailer. So we're, we look forward to experiencing the stuff that happens in the trailer. Don't show us the trailer again. Mm -hmm. That's not, that is not cool. It was mm -hmm. not cool. It was not cool. No. So that's an issue. So once you are street kid, you do have a really, really fun, intricate, interesting section of the game where you're doing cool stuff. You've mm -hmm. got someone on your team named T-Bug. She's hacking doors open for you. She's t informing about stuff with you. It's fantastic. You're working with Jackie. He's covering your back and helping you shoot people and everything. Mm -hmm. You got like a little crew going on. Yeah, you've got a crew going on. You also, there are these uh, car chase gunfights that happen a couple times mm -hmm. that are pretty fun. Mm -hmm. um, there's this uh, flathead, flathead robot, spider robot thing, right? It's super cool. Mm -hmm. It can climb on walls and ceilings and hack into stuff and go camo. Mm -hmm. You use that for a mission. It's really fun. Very How many of the things... Again. Yeah, how many of these things that I mentioned are in the rest of the game? Uh, car chases. No, they're not, though. There's one. I just did one. Is the, Okay, okay, so there is one. Who is it? Uh, when you're Johnny Silverhand and our soccer oh. kidnapped Alt, there's a car chase. Yeah. And right, the flashback. I forgot about that one. That's true. Yeah, so there's at least that one. There is that one, but it's definitely not part of the game. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> it just, I don't know, it just feels like what they wanted the game to be was everything they have in that first two, well, how long is it? Two hours? About that. About two hour long when you're with Jackie and you're doing the job at Arasaka. That's what they wanted the game to be like for the rest of the game. Mm. But either they couldn't do that. Or they ran out of time to do that, or I don't know what happened to it, because that seems like that's the intent for mm -hmm. Cyberpunk. Right. And then it's it's Far Cry. Yeah. It completely flips to Far Cry after that. It's interesting. I'm still in the clearly beginner stages tutorial of the game. All I can say is I'm really excited for all the underwater bits. <laughs> <laughs> do they talk about that? No, I don't think so. They don't. That is something they had in trailers in 2018, 2017, 2015, though, is underwater missions. Mm -hmm. They're okay. <laughs> so there's definitely stuff that they talked about years ago that they just scrapped early and never really made it into the game. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that they clearly, clearly intended to have in the game that just aren't there. Mm -hmm. Underwater missions because there's a perk in the skill tree that makes it so you can't be detected by enemies when you're underwater. Mm -hmm. This is completely irrelevant to the game it never comes up mm -hmm. there is not a single side mission or any part of the main quest that's like okay now get underwater and swim through you know a tunnel and pop up it, there's nothing there's none of that it's amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's that perk and then there's uh there's cyberware that you can add into your 
clothing and stuff that it gives you additional time underwater <laughs> without having to breathe. And it's like, well, this is incredibly useful. Thanks for adding <laughs> that into the game. So they clearly intended to have it and just scrapped it. Gone. There's just, just these little ghosts left over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know. I just... I mean, as long as we're ranting the AI, there's just no AI in this game at all. This is one of the things they touted as being part of Cyberpunk and the experience was this incredible artificial intelligence with the NPCs in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was they would... Make the most realistic react. city ever or something? That's the word. That is the word. The most realistic video game city ever. And you know what? If you're just If you're at the surface level, all you're doing is driving around going from point A to point B to do your quests, mm -hmm. it feels that way. It's bustling. There's a lot of people. There's conversations happening. There, it almost feels like you can smell the food in the stalls. And it's just it's really immersive that way. Um, okay. For me, it was so, anyway. So hardware bias here, which is there's a high and low performance setting for to, to make the crowds smaller on the streets. So, ah, okay. If you're like me and you're playing on low performance mode, there's not a, there's there's people and there's not enough like so little that it feels like it's empty or a ghost town or anything like that. But it does not feel bustling except at like the steps to the mega buildings where your like apartment is. There's usually right. a couple people hanging around there. Um and some people oh, that's up, interesting. It's, it's not like a thriving metropolis. Okay. Like, that's anyway. fair. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, crowd density is a factor of hardware. Yep. Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, I think what the game they intended to make <laughs> was a thriving, bustling metropolis with a lot of people, and I think they succeeded. But, but the driving AI is stupid. If you stop in front of them, hmm. they will just create a queue behind every car that comes up on this. will just stop. They'll, they don't try to go around. Hmm. They don't honk at you. Just wait. Mm -hmm. forever and ever until you move because mm -hmm. there's no intelligence there at all mm -hmm. like that's something that i saw a reddit post that's something that's in lego city yeah <laughs> like if you stop in traffic in lego city they'll go around you it's incredible that it's not here it's amazing also if you follow any npc they're all just making back and forth tracks yeah right so mm -hmm. you follow a dude he'll walk down hit his end of his track flip around Go all the way back around to the other end of his track, flip around, and just do that forever. Yep. <sighs> Which is annoying because in Witcher 3, they definitely had like set AI schedules. If you went into a town at a certain time of day, the people would be doing different things. Right. Uh, if you're in a fishing village, the men of the town will be out fishing during the day. At night, they'll be in the pub drinking. And at night, night, later that night, people will be in their beds sleeping. Mm -hmm. There's none of that. None of that in here at all, and I can't imagine. Pretty sure Skyrim had something similar to that, where yeah. shopkeepers would be out at certain times, and yep, you know they'd be in their beds at home, sleeping, right? Yep. Fallout had something like that. Fallout Three. There, yeah. Any any game that has tried to do this kind of open NPC RPG. artificial intelligence with open world stuff, yeah, mm -hmm. has this to some extent, mm -hmm. and for it just to not exist it all is mind-blowing to me mm -hmm. i don't understand how it's not there well every shop in the game is 24 hours so all the, there are everyone's asleep at the same time and everyone's up at the same time you just don't see them all at the same time <laughs> right yeah that's the thing it's right it's a city that never sleeps basically yeah you that's the intent it's supposed to feel like people are up partying all night some mm -hmm. people have day jobs and they're just different people you know mm -hmm. yeah Someone Agreed. else comes and walks back and forth between these two points during the day <laughs> and the night. You just don't see them swap over. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that that's it in a nutshell. Is on the surface, beautiful, beautiful, very fun game. But it's an action-adventure Far Cry game. It is not truly an RPG. It is not truly an open world in any sense of the word game. And I just, I don't know how they dropped the ball so hard on that. Mm. Another thing is the cops. <laughs> the cops are great. The cops are great. They have so they teleportation have, tech. It's great. They have the best teleportation tech. <laughs> they have um, 
a wanted system. So if you, because they just don't want you rampaging around murdering civilians for the whole right. time. It's a very GTA wanted system. It's like you do yeah. something bad, you get one star. You do something worse, you get two stars. And then yep. three stars. And then by four stars, you probably die because all the cops in the city literally teleport to your location and start shooting at you. Yep. Um, and and, and even my robot cop. Yeah, even my one punch lady can't stand up to all their shots at once. Dang, um, that's intense. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, okay. she, she dies pretty quick because they have magic, I guess. Um, <laughs> they sure do. Yeah. They sure do have magic. Not wrong. Wow. All right. Um, yeah. So basically the wanted system. Mm-hmm. If you get a block away from the cops, everything is forgiven. Mm-hmm. It's true. That sucks. That's really awful. Yeah. Especially when every time you scan a random person, it gives them a name. And if they've got, if they're wanted in night city, it'll have like a little bounty on them. Even if it's like 15 bucks or something. Right. Yep. It tells yep. you their criminal record. But if yep. you get a, if you do something bad, you just walk away and it's fine. There's no bounty system. If you go a block away and all those cops that were shooting at you give up, you run into different cops and they're like, what's up? Mm-hmm. Don't get too close, but we're not going to try to kill you. They don't care. They don't you, know. Uh, so you know the um, like assault in progress, random yeah. quests. So if you have two stars or anything like that, and then you start one of those, your stars go away. Oh, that's interesting. See, I read something about that too today. They intended it for to be street cred and cop cred to be different things. Oh, really? Yeah, the intent was that if you ha- if you helped the cops a lot, then the people on the street would hate you for it. Hmm. And if you helped the gang the gang members and the regular people too much, the cops would be mad at you. Okay. So that if you sense. yeah, I, oh, doesn't it make sense? And none of that matters. It doesn't matter. It's gone. Mm-hmm. There are there were ideas that were just scrapped. What's funny too is I did a mission the other day where it was uh, assist the cops in a shootout kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I snuck up behind the people they're shooting at and broke their necks. And then the cops are like, hey, hey, hey. And they started doing the like, we're aware of you and we're going to shoot you in the face thing. And I was like, hey, wait a second. I'm helping out. You didn't ask them for a mission before engaging. <laughs> like you didn't get a standing orders to kill, right? Like, I, what's, be- what's best is they're maelstrom guys. Mm-hmm. Like these aren't even like, these are common criminals who I don't know, maybe... It's a it's a shoot it's a tense standoff, but maybe they're not super guilty. But it's maelstrom. Like these guys are bad dudes. Mm-hmm. These are the people that like kidnap Buddhist priests off the street and force them to have implants. God, oh, that was a good mission. Yeah, that was a good one. I Were you able to save him without murdering the maelstrom guys? No, because I walked up to the maelstrom guys and they instantly started shooting me every time. So <laughs> I I couldn't do anything. I was just like. I guess this is what I do now. But I ran into yeah. those two guys later on. They were like hanging out in Japantown. And one of them was like, oh, you, thank you. Hello. And the other one was like, what you did was still murder. Leave. Oh, what? <laughs> dude. Like Next time I'm going to let Maelstrom cut off your legs, dude. Come on. Yeah. Jeez, that guy sucked. Like mm-hmm. I get, I get, I understand your principles, but like you can be socially acceptable about this. You don't mm-hmm. have to call mm-hmm. me names. Yeah. Yeah. That was good a good time. mission. Yep. That's the other thing. There are good missions. There are some really, really good missions in this game that are really interesting and really fun. Yeah, it's true. That are, that are written and developed exceptionally well. It's just the world, the open world concept as a whole is just not a thing. It's not a thing. They completely abandoned it. I feel like, I don't know, the more I'm reading, it just feels like they had a ton of features in, mm-hmm. in like January. Mm-hmm. And they were like, okay, we can, if we fix all these bugs, we'll have an amazing game in 2020, right? It's true. But then I think they just ran into like, we can't get this to work. <laughs> like <laughs> there are game breaking bugs in here. The system doesn't work. This system doesn't work. This system doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And instead of being like, we're going to buckle down and fix all this stuff, it would take them too long. I think they realized they just scrapped a ton of systems, mm. whole cloth and just said, all right, it, you know. It's a Far Cry game now, but we're not gonna we're not gonna be upfront about this. Here's the thing: I don't think with those systems, the game like the underwater one. I don't think they looked at like, oh, underwater combat. That's proving to be too challenging technically to get ready in time, right? 
or have any level of polish. I don't think if you add it underwater combat, the game ultimately changes all that much. There's just more of it, right? So instead, they just decide to cut underwater combat, cut the other, any levels that make you go underwater except for one because there is no combat. Yeah, and uh, it's easy to do that one. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, I think if you look at each and each of the systems that they probably left, I think the game's ultimately too much different. Like, sure, if you have cop cred and street cred, um, you could kind of get different flavors from the crowd. But I don't think anywhere in their design mythos uh, did they want any part of the game to be restricted to you for picking something else, right? Like if you put all your points into body, it doesn't restrict your mind at any way. Like you're, you can still go to 20 intelligence. There's no issue with that. You can be the smartest person and the buffest person. Uh, you can't choose everything, but you can definitely choose multiple things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've got uh, tech and intelligence. How there's a difference. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I've got body at like 18 already. So, right. Um, but well, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I ended with intelligence and tech maxed out mm -hmm. and I still had reflexes at like 16 and then some points in body. Mm -hmm. And then what's the other one? Oh, cool. cool. I never didn't do anything in cool. No, no. You can be the least, most least uncool person, right? Like that's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. Uh, yeah, so exactly. They And also in every mission, there are multiple ways to complete it, which I think is nice. I think that's nice mm -hmm. of them to do mm -hmm. it, obviously. Yeah. They don't shoehorn you into any particular method. Mm -hmm. If you want to go in and like uh, net runner everybody to death, you can do that. If you want to shoot them all in the face, you can do that. If you mm -hmm. want to sneak in, you can probably do that. If you want to get into the building, you can use your high body stats to do it or mm -hmm. your high technology stats to do it or your high net runner stats to do it. It's mm -hmm. real nice that way. I really mm -hmm. do appreciate that about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still remember a job I got from the Padre. He was like, I need you to find some information at, at this like bar or something. And I just happened to be walking through a back alley and it, like when I got the, the quest given to me and I just like looked up through this window and I was like, I bet I can get in through that window. Went in and I was like, oh, this is the computer. I killed one guy, disabled a camera <laughs> and then I got the information I got out. I was like, oh, that was a really easy way to do that mission might not have found it if I approached this location from the opposite direction and been like, all right, time to go in through the front door. Right. And yeah. I've totally, it, they've trained me to be like, I'm going to make a 360 around this building that they want me to get into and just see if there's an easier way to do it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of the time there is. So they put a lot of time and effort into making sure these side missions, again, anything that is scripted, anything they have developed and paid a lot of attention to because it's a mission in the game is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Generally, super speaking. good, always fun. Generally speaking, yeah, but it's it varies. It's like I need you to go rescue, like this. <laughs> these dudes are betting on boxing, and or like Muay Thai or something, and they mm -hmm. kidnap this dude's coach so that he would lose the match, and so they could match fix right. Uh -huh. So go rescue the coach. Oh like it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's different stuff. It's it's a lot of the time. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, and even even the side missions involving uh, there's a cyber cycle problem going on where some people who install cyberware into their bodies go nuts and start killing everybody around them, mm -hmm. and nobody knows why. And basically, the government's official response to this is murder them. They right. send their own cyber psychos to go kill them. Mm -hmm. And Max there's one cop who's like, yeah, Max Tack, who seems real cool, but by golly, they're not in this game. No. Uh, you see them twice. It's fine. Yeah, that's another. We'll get, yeah. Anyway, and there's a series of missions where a, one of these cops has her own side thing going on where she wants you as a mercenary to go neutralize these cyber psychos, but not kill them so that she can try some treatments cop. and things on them. She, she left the force? She's not a cop. She wasn't a cop. She was a media. She was a media. Yeah, I don't know if... And she joined the cops, didn't she? No, she was a media, and then she became a fixer. She's just a fixer? I think so. I yeah. just assume she's a cop. No, I don't think she's a cop. Maybe. She I, was a reporter. I don't think she would... I don't no, know you're right. Attention. Yeah, no, I was right. right. I've, I don't know. She kind of comes off as a cop, I guess, is the problem. 
<laughs> she's pretty straight laced that way. She doesn't feel like the other fixers. I guess I always just put her in a different box. Mm. Anyway, cool. Good to know. We figured something out. Yeah, so there's that. Also, back to stuff that's in the first two hours of the game and not ever in the game after that. You have a, uh, a run-in with Max Tack. Mm-hmm. And they look awesome and they're cool and you never see them again except for one time. Mm-hmm. And then there's a run-in with Trauma Team, who's like this militarized uh, hospital wing of the government, I guess. No, they're private, though. That's I think, right. I think they're private, yeah. You have to have a private insurance uh, policy for them to help you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, they seem really cool, too. And then they never factor into the game ever after that. Yeah, you can see them, like, they're flying cars going around the city yeah. sometimes. And there is like one hill where you can buy a car that there's always a trauma team hanging out by a corpse, like doing nothing, not leaving the scene. Um, yeah. But other than that, I haven't really come across anything with trauma team. Um, no. Yeah. They will. They'll be on the ground sometimes. Like there will be some bodies, and they're there doing hospitaly things. But it's, they're just background dressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. So there's that. Uh, What was I gonna... A lot of people are upset about just the lack of customization. They wanted to be able to change what their character looked like in the game, right? Mm -hmm. They understand that you set your character uh, at the beginning of the game, but the whole point of Cyberpunk is people are changing what they look like. You can't Mm -hmm. even get a haircut in this game. You can't change what your hair looks like. You can change what your hair looks like. How? By equipping different hats. (laughs) <laughs> that's true if you have long hair and put on a hat your hair is short now uh-huh uh-huh you put on <laughs> a helmet your long hair is now short and if you get on a motorbike there'll be a brief moment where your helmet doesn't render and you are bald <laughs> yeah uh, so. yeah so that's an issue yeah a lot of visual bugs, a lot of behavioral bugs, a lot of falling through the map sometimes. I did that once. That was fun. Mm-hmm. It's always great to fall through the map. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Whoa. I mean, I didn't get stuck at least. That was nice. It's true. <laughs> the crafting system could use a lot of work. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's pretty, f- like, it's okay if you get, like, all the perks and stuff. and You can kind of really game it to be very beneficial for you. And so I yes. did that, and I realized, oh, I've crafted all my, like, legendary quick hacks and all that. And then I was like, I could just go reset my perks and respend all those perk points somewhere else, because I don't need to craft any more legendary quick hacks. <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So I got all those perks back, and I was like, why aren't there quests where, like, people want you to make them shit, right? Like, yeah. why, why is that not a thing? <laughs> they didn't have enough time. They couldn't do everything they already planned to do. So, but crafting two, two things that really bother me. One, when you're crafting, so you can take uncommon mats and craft them into common mats and craft them in, or vice versa, and craft them into rare, right? Right. But you have to click and hold to craft each one of them over and over and over. There's no, please craft 30 of these. You do it one at a time and it's a three second mouse click hold three second mouse click hold over and over and it sucks that's terrible yes that is really really bad uh yeah. <laughs> it's actually faster just to do like a uh, a money exploit and then go and buy all the materials you need it's way faster yeah just to do that. It to- yep totally is 100 percent. so yeah. that's annoying uh, another thing i guess this isn't crafting its inventory but when you're purchasing ammunition uh so, you can buy more ammo than you can carry yeah you can also craft more ammo than you can carry uh, yes yeah um, they have a definite hard limits on how much ammo you can carry depending on the type of ammo mm-hmm. and if you're already maxed out on pistol ammo they'll let you buy another 400 rounds of pistol ammo take your money and then you still have 400 rounds of pistol ammo right and that <laughs> pistol ammo doesn't like drop to the floor because nope. you can't carry it it's just which also annoys me because if they had um because when you go into your inventory, everything's like displayed out and compacted as though there's a limited physical space, like a grid layout of like you have eight by twelve slots to put stuff. A v- visual 
kind right. of layout. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which isn't the case at all because you have a weight system. Um, yep. And it's like, well, which is it? <laughs> right. Why are you arranging everything like this? If it's, um, cause it, it feels like if you could buy more ammo than you can hold, it should just take up another slot, but it doesn't. You just disappears into the ether. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, because I don't know. Yeah. That's very strange. <laughs> also, you I mean, might might be the only person in the world who bought who had to buy ammo. <laughs> like, <laughs> very true. Very yeah. possible. Yeah. I do a lot of shooting. I never really figured out you could craft bullets, so I never did that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, which left looting bullets, and it's really scatter shot how you loot bullets. You can find a bunch of pistol ammo and. Mm -hmm. No sniper rifle ammo in a building, and the other building has three shotgun ammo, you know, right, clips. Right. But it's a mess. Mm -hmm. But just back to the character customization, though, it's just people expected to be able to change how they looked, other than their clothes. Mm -hmm. Like people are like, I want a silver arm, like Johnny Silverhand. Can't right. do it. Nope. Right. I want a bionic eye, like River. Can't do it. I don't know who River is yet. You still haven't met River. When no. do you meet River? I don't know. You say river, I've been thinking go to her. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done uh, the mayoral candidate quest line? No. Where does that one come from? I don't remember, but I think you meet river through them. Okay. I'm sure I'll get there. I'm sure you will. Anyway, point is, there's all these different people in the city that have super cool looks. You can't take their looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do any of that stuff and, and people, it annoys people there's ads like walking around the city you can see ads for different body implants and shaping yep. them the way you want not available right no nope. you can find bds for some of those ads like there's ads yeah. for some woman with three mouths it's very strange but you can buy the bd tape for it and it just says incompatible with your hardware in the flavor text yeah that's another thing i really feel like they intended to have brain dances be acquirable, experienceable things as part of the world immersion and not just mm -hmm. part of quests. Because mm -hmm. they do exist in quests. They're, yeah. they're investigation tools uh -huh. I've done every time. Four, I think, in total in the entire game, and one of them is the tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> there might be another one in like the you have passed the point of no return part of the game, if I remember right. But anyway, okay. there are not that many. And then they have these brain dances you can buy off the street, and they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely insane like i mean how fun would it be to like be able to experience a brain dance just for the sake of its fun and its entertainment rather than this detective sherlock holmes version of it that they right. always use with you right because then you go into certain you go into certain clubs and they're like hey we've got a whole list of brain dances here they're all awesome there's a catalog you can look through let us know what you want and then you're like okay then you realize you can't there is no catalog. There are no actual brain dances. There's nothing happening in this club. Hmm. Imagine if you get to the end of the Judy's quest line and you could get a copy of the brain dance, the two track, <sighs> two person, one track brain dance of you guys swimming. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. Yeah. Nope. nope. Can't do it. Not <laughs> happening. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you're looking for a game that stands up to scrutiny as an immersive feels like a real city game. This is not the game for you. No. If you want a game that's immersive, stands up to criticism, play final fantasy seven. It's time. <laughs> I have recently started playing again. Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this time I am playing on my switch. Um, oh. because one, it's handheld Two, it has, uh, features, like built-in hacks almost, so I can push in the thumbsticks. Left thumbstick gives me three times speed, so it just speeds up the game to you know run around fast. So oh, I'm walking okay. Slow. Right the PlayStation doesn't have that. Not that I'm aware of. What? All right. Uh, right stick gives me uh, it's like full heals every second of the game. So the moment you take damage, like you can still die if something deals your hit points and damage. Um, but if it does less than your full hit points, you'll just instantly heal back up and it fully heals your, um, uh, fully charges your limit break every round as well. So every, every attack you do can be your limit break. <laughs> that seems real broke actually. Uh, it's to offset the other one, which is if you push both sticks at once, 
you're, uh, you don't get any random encounters. So it's for people who want to play through the game, but don't want to fight um, everywhere, but they still yeah. need to be able to do the, um, the scripted boss fights. So right. you just do limit breaks. <laughs> Interesting. So it's story mode, basically. Essentially, yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be. I mean, not entirely, but yeah. basically, sure. Right, right, right. Okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, hmm. I didn't know it was on the Switch, actually. That's crazy. Yeah, it's... Mm-hmm. It is. But yeah. Huh. It's still a good game. All right, good to know. Yeah, you... play Final Fantasy VII, the remake. No, no, not the remake. The original. I mean, the original. Also play the remake. It's still good. Yeah. Part Fair. two should be coming soon. Um, should it? Do they have a date? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I expect it'll be out in like five years. Do you have anything more you wish to complain about uh, for Cyberpunk? Um, I have a list here. Oh, I think okay. we covered all of it. I guess the just we covered all of it in broad strokes, right? Uh huh. It's all the same thing. Uh-huh. It all fits under the umbrellas we've talked about, but just we talked about this yesterday. You didn't care about it as much as I did, but just I want to be able to go to a food stall, buy some food, and have an eating animation. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Even if only four percent of the player base cares about that, and no one else cares about it, I think it would be fun. Mm-hmm. It'd oh, yeah. be immersive on a certain level. I think it would be fun, like a one-time thing. Yeah, or, or to, like to have that. the option. But um, yeah, I personally, I would prefer that the food has more effects than just like. Gives you In increased stamina. Health. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, yeah. It restores a bunch of stamina or health and regens it when you're out of combat. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's all it does. That's all it does. <laughs> yeah. This man. Which honestly, you can get that stuff in perks. Go into the body tree. You can get health regen outside of combat and inside of combat, but it's slower. Right. Right. Like, there's no need totally for any food. Right. Right. Like There's I, not. I, I didn't. I didn't eat anything once my entire playthrough the first time. No. Not once. If I ate something, it was an accident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're trying to click through the inventory and accidentally clicked on food. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah. what's this weird status? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just it's, a, it's frustrating because in quests they have times where people are eating food. They have the animations built into the game. It's true. They just they never exist outside of these couple times you see somebody eating, and it's just dumb right <sighs> don't forget there's supposed anyway. to be a multiplayer portion of this game coming out at some point i know i they've actually said they're not going to do that in 2021 they're going to oh, spend right. the year fixing stuff so they'll delay that until it's yes ready. cool that's, that's what they said i don't know i don't know i'm not interested in the multiplayer aspect of it at all no either well it depends if I if you could like if it was PVE not PVP right like it was like and it had its own narrative because if they had like a you could make a crew and it's not you don't play V you play as your own character right Ooh, you're the net runner for the crew yeah like oh that'd, that'd be fun yeah that would be fun oh that's a good idea okay <laughs> nobody I'm on board with that. nobody clip that and send it to them because they'll have to scrap everything they've already got and start making that. <laughs> like, Ugh. No, how fun that, like how fun would that be in the actual game that we have now right you mm. choose to be a net runner or a gun or right it's uh basically turned it into a, a D and d group you've got a bard and a warrior not maybe not exactly that but you have a specific position you fill within a crew right i don't know if that'd be fun for the whole game to be kind of pigeonholed like that but mm-hmm. But for a, a little offshoot thing, yeah, you know, uh, maybe like a ten-hour campaign that might be fun. Totally. Mm. Anyway, there's just they what have... they promised is not what they gave us, and oh, what no. they tried to do they could not fulfill. That's right. what it comes down to. Uh huh. Yeah. That said, very fun, <laughs> very fun game, very immersive game. If you play it the way they want you to, and you play it the right way. Yeah. 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 Pick it up on sale is my uh, my recommendation. It was already 40 bucks. I saw it, uh, there was like a code for it somewhere already today. Oh, really? Amazing. Of course, that's $40 down from the 60 it is in the US. I'm sure it's $137 in Australia. 89.95. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So it might be cheaper. Anyway, whatevs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm I, again. Real fun. We talked about this yesterday. Like it's fun just to drive around in the city. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hate driving. So here's okay. Another quick problem. When you're driving mm -hmm. and you're on a mouse and a keyboard, pressing a key just puts what you're doing to a hundred. Yes. So if Final. you press forward, it just floors the gas. Mm -hmm. And if you press backward, it slams on the brakes. And if you turn, it turns real sharp. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no, like, I imagine it's actually better with analog sticks on a PlayStation, for example, where you can actually determine gradual acceleration mm -hmm. instead of just gunning it if you hold the button down. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it'd be better, actually, in a console in that particular situation. But anyway, the point is, on a motorcycle anyway, it's really, really fun just to drive around. You have fast travel points, which actually were probably intended to be a metro system, like a train system that exists. You just can't use it. Mm -hmm. But then I think they couldn't get it. Again, it's another thing. They couldn't get it to work right. They couldn't fix all the bugs with it. And they shelved it. Wow. And just put in fast travel points instead. They couldn't get you on the inside of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> because <laughs> I've jumped onto the, 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 like the monorail track. And once you're on that, they don't know what you're doing. You stand there frozen. Like you can't get off until a tram comes and runs you over. <laughs> right. <laughs> seen videos of people jumping on top of the train though oh really that didn't yeah, work for me <laughs> they might have patched it out that might have been like a week ago or something okay anyway yeah there are some clips on reddit of people riding the little train around town and it looks real cool mm -hmm. it looks real neat um so they couldn't get that and additionally they couldn't get self-driving cars to work even though there is an in-universe series of self-driving taxis Yes. From a company called Delamine that has a very involved, very fun side quest. Mm -hmm. But you can't call a Delamine taxi cab Never. and get self driven anywhere. You drive yourself everywhere, every time, or use the fast travel point. Or there's a. The, the, well, here's the thing there is AI times where you get into a car and the NPC drives it. Right? Yes. Like Pan Am drives a car around while you're trying to get her to help you uh, a bunch of times. And it's like, okay, she's going to do exactly 53 miles per hour everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, right. and she Even will on run. She will run through cars and run through pedestrians. Yes, uh, stuff will despawn to help her out. I think the problem is the AI is just bad. Mm -hmm. They don't have AI. It all comes back to that initial umbrella of the AI doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't have self-driving cars if you don't have an AI. Again, this is all stuff that GTA Five had. You know, seven years ago. This is mm -hmm. Red Dead Redemption Two's done all of these things so much better. Like Naughty Dog is just taking. CD Projekt Red's lunch money at this point. Red Dead Redemption <laughs> 2 did everything that they tried to do with Cyberpunk and actually pulled it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I need to play Red Dead Redemption 2. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just been sitting in my library for like six months. Maybe a year now? It's been a long time. I should play it. Yeah, we can look at your Steam profile and it'll say when you bought it. We can. Actually, I think I bought it on the Epic Store because it was on sale. Uh, I think I think you own it on Steam. Do I own it on Steam? Hold I up. I vaguely remember. My Steam's refusing to load at the moment, so. I got it. Red. Nope. Not here. Okay. Mm -mm. But maybe the Epic Store will tell me when I bought it. Whatever. It's been a long time. So what it's else? Been a while, That's the thing. Like all the all the Reddit comments from people who are like, "This is not." It's missing all of these things that we wish they had. The constant response is they had this in GTA 5 and they had all this in Red Dead Redemption 2. And the fact that none of it is here. Like it, it'd be a different thing if a couple things worked of this AI list, mm -hmm. but none of them do. Not a single AI involved feature exists or works even close to how it should work if it's an AI. There's also not any variance in the stuff that does work, right? Like, have you seen the clips of people blocking traffic and then they throw a grenade and every single person's response is to get out and crouch? Yes, <laughs> get out, crouch, cower. Yeah. Everybody. Sing in sync, synchronized cowering. Yeah. <laughs> Literally no variance in the AI that does work. Oh, uh, it's not. See, I don't. So that's the thing. It's That's not AI. AI is not somebody shoots a gun, your character runs away from it. 
and that's all it is, or cowers. I think it needs to be more involved in that to actually c consider it artificial intelligence rather than well, a scripted response to a very set parameter. What we call AI in terms of NPCs is just scripted stuff to par parameters. They're usually just more complex than that, right? Well, a AIs are not actually AIs. <laughs> Well, but there's a certain level of pathfinding for self-driving cars, for example, mm -hmm. that is problem solving, I'm, right? I, it's I, not I, just responding to a script. I, I am just talking about what we call NPCs in games, right? <laughs> not talking about actual self-driving cars, which will would do... Yeah, no, 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 like, in game. In game, I'm talking about. If mm -hmm. you have... a If you get in a taxi and say, take me here, it has to figure out the correct route to get there. In which game? And give me a give me a example. well GTA Five. Uh yeah, but it's still just like following the, like you put like, like like the game does like uh, G, uh Cyberpunk does this. You put a waypoint on the map, and it highlights a line, and then you go okay, that's the line that the taxi should take. Because see, it does. Way. But if it's if it's just that simple, why don't we have it? Because CD Projekt Red balked it hard. Like I don't know why, <laughs> but that's that. <laughs> That's what GTA Five is doing. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. So they've just failed at every basic task in this area entirely. Scrapped it all, and maybe it'll come back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows how this game will look in like three years' time? We'll get the um... well. But you know what? What's yeah? The No Man's Sky. That's the funny thing is No Man's Sky has become a verb in the gaming community. There were so many comments from people on the subreddit for Cyberpunk hoping that it gets No Man's sky mm. That's how they say it. That's what it means now is taking something that's bad at release, working your butt off to fix it, and then it's a better game in a couple of years. Right, right. Amazing. Uh... Incredible. So I, I won't touch No Man's Sky with like a 10 foot pole. Because, Me neither. Because of how it launched. Yep. Um, but I did see on, <laughs> I think it was the gaming subreddit, um, somebody posted a quote from Hello Games being like, we're starting a new game and it's our most ambitious project ever. And I'm they like, oh, not. oh they no, did not. not this again. <laughs> no, they did not do that. Did they do that? <laughs> I Why would they do that? don't know if it was real or not just the idea made me laugh oh okay you know that hurts me it really does did you watch the in good ending of no man's sky from internet historian uh no you should it's really good we'll consider it's uh everything internet historian does is interesting and funny and oh good, yeah but Man. but he does a really good job of kind of parsing through what happened exactly and why it happened and um yeah, I changed my opinion on No Man's Sky. I'm still never going to play it. Mm -hmm. no. But uh, they really did. They really did. This is the one thing I took away from it that I didn't understand, is that they took all the money they'd gotten from people who bought their game mm -hmm. and basically hunkered down and just started implementing features that people wanted and fixing bugs that people wanted fixed. Mm -hmm. That's all they did for the next two or three years. So... CD Projekt Red could do that. They've made a ton of money mm -hmm. on sales already. Let me take a look real quick. Uh... Uh, so I found an article from September th last year talking to Polygon. H Hello Games founder Sean Murray T Studios' next original game, which will apparently be similar in scope to No Man's Sky. While he didn't reveal any other details, Murray described the project as huge, ambitious game like No Man's Sky. <laughs> Buddy, look, this is what got you in trouble the first time. <laughs> Stop talking to media. Stop it. <laughs> Stop, Stop tweeting. Stop talking to reporters. Just don't do it anymore. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's funny. That's, inc that's incredible. Anyway, uh, let's see. Cyberpunk 2077 sold more than 13 million copies in the first week. Oh, yeah, they got buying. They're fine. So they're fine. They could totally financially afford to hunker down and either figure out all this stuff that they scrapped. Like, I don't, I don't think we can expect them to put features in that they haven't even started working on that. Whatever. Right. Don't do that. 
But for the stuff that we know they tried to do and failed at, let's get that in. Let's get those things in. It doesn't seem impossible. Right. My, my question is, how many sales have No Man's Sky seen in the last four years post Ooh. Um, release, right? Like, because if they made a bunch of sales day one and then they were like, we can take that money um, and, you know, fix the game. How much, how much like more revenue have they gotten since then? Um, problem is I don't Great know if you see those numbers because that would entirely depend on whether or not it's worth it for them. Right. Yep. Um, well, yeah, I don't, from the internet historians reporting, it didn't seem like that was ever anything that hello games cared about. If they just burned through all the cash they made or most of the cash they made, then so be it. I don't think they were intending to make something that became another financial success, you know? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Hello Games wants to make more games, obviously. And if they burn yes. all the money they made on No Man's Sky's release, fixing No Man's Sky, they'll have no starting funds. Like, sure, they could pop, uh, get a publisher deal and, you know, take money from Microsoft or whoever to make another game. But if they had, if they could do it off their own money, I'm sure they would. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're right. That it it helps them get money later, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So interestingly enough, I can see Steam's peak users for No Man's Sky, August uh -huh. 2016 when it released, it was two hundred and twelve thousand, okay. and then it like. It doesn't ever really get above 20,000 uh, for like another year or two. And then July 2018, it's 96,000 for like yeah. two months straight. So they've been releasing um, updates, free for, DLC. Right. And so they've, been, they've been labeled like they are expansions, basically. So it's not just like we pushed out a sneaky patch. It's like this is the mm -hmm. this patch. Right. And so people hear about that and then they re-download the game and play it. Right. right. So I like there's no way to tell how many of these are new sales, but right. It seems like people keep coming back, and that like I can't imagine that not being some new sales. Agreed. Right. It would be pretty nuts if there were no new sales. Like right. just these peaks just are ninety thousand of the people who bought the game back in twenty sixteen coming back to it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I mean, it still currently has. As of December, 12,000 players playing it. I mean, that's not mm -hmm. horrendous. Mm -hmm. Still mm -hmm. seems relevant in a way that I think, obviously, if they just left it to die, it would have died. Easy. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, what it feels like... This feels like... CD Projekt Red bit off more than they could chew. I think we said that two weeks ago. Um... If they had started smaller, if they'd started with a smaller, less ambitious open world style game, I think they could have nailed that and then used those lessons to make their cyberpunk, you know? Mm, yeah. For them to go, they've never done this before. They've never tried this before. That's GTA 5 was the culmination of four previous open world games. That's not true. There are more than four previous GTA games, <laughs> right? Like, you no. have. You what? Have uh, yeah, Vice City, San Andreas, GTA 3. Are five they... called five. Well, why is Final Fantasy 7 called 7 when they're... Well, because it's a Japanese game and they don't name anything correctly when they're numbering it. Right, but like Final Fantasy 10 and then 10 2. Wouldn't, shouldn't 10 2 be 11? But it's not. <laughs> Right. I know, Final Fantasy's dumb. I'm telling you. I agree with you on that yeah, one. Lots Hang of on, games Grand Theft this. Auto, Grand Theft Auto 2, Grand Theft Auto 3, uh -huh. Vice City, San Andreas, 4, and 5. Right. How many games is so there? Seven. <laughs> so <laughs> there were six prior <laughs> games that they did open world style stuff in. They incrementally made it better every year. And uh -huh. then by the time they hit five, it turned into a massive success. That uh... I mean, that I they like... then continued to put on every console known to man. It's their Skyrim. Right, right. Like, they milking that thing until it falls over, right? Yes. Um, uh-huh. But I would say, like, isn't... 
Witcher 3, an open world game? Like, did they learn nothing from this? Shouldn't they have already had <laughs> experience with better AI? <laughs> right. And not That's putting motorbikes thing. on the overpass above me or roaches on houses? Well, that makes total sense. <laughs> like, spawning roach is exactly how they spawn cars and crazy stuff happens. Right. <laughs> as a result. <laughs> roach is in car form in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing. We talked about this yesterday was the concept that we wish that something we did in Night City changed it in some way. Mm -hmm. We wish helping a gang made them like us. We wish helping Regina with the cyber psycho problem fix the cyber psycho problem. Mm -hmm. Right? We just wish we changed things. And The Witcher is really good at changing things. You go and you help out a town and at first they're really distrustful of you and then you solve their monster problem and they're more friendly. Mm. Or you solve a huge long chess queen quest chain for a dude and it changes what happens to the guy. Like... Mm -hmm. There are lasting effects of the things that you do. It just feels like Night City can't be changed. And thematically, that's pretty appropriate, I think. Yeah. Because one person really shouldn't be able to change mm -hmm. Night City. Right. But I don't think that's what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were. I don't know. I Maybe, right. Like It's kind of like almost too meta where it just feels like they didn't finish the game rather than that being the intended consequences of the game. Correct. Right. Correct. They wanted you to be able to change things. I really think they did. I mean, that's... Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Here's the thing. Like, why do they... If any one they of the features was complete, then maybe. Well, but, like, they allow you to play nice with Maelstrom. In the first of the game, they let you uh -huh. play nice with Maelstrom. They let you side with them against Militech. Mm -hmm. They let you rescue Brick, like the original leader of Maelstrom. Mm-hmm. Which naturally should have some positive consequences about your relationship with Maelstrom, but it doesn't. It doesn't change a thing. They still will kill you on sight after that. 100%, yeah. Yeah, so if they don't intend for you to change anything, don't let us do things that naturally would change things. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Okay, all right, fair enough. Blah. Ugh. Okay, so I don't know. Are we gonna? We might No Man's Sky Cyberpunk in twenty twenty one. We'll see. <laughs> I, I mean, it'll take them four years. So, like, I mean, oh, no, man, like, I mean. yeah, like No Man's Sky, it'll be four years. So twenty twenty five, we'll come back to this. Well, and a huge part of the problem with Cyberpunk is they announced it in twenty thirteen. They yeah. were like, "What up, Cyberpunk? It'll be done when it's done." But still, the hype train started right then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then, and then they're. This is a lot of guesswork, but it really seems like most of their devs were working on The Witcher 3 yeah. until late 2015. And then once The Witcher 3 was a thing and solid, then they pulled everybody off and dumped them on a cyberpunk. But that means instead of seven years of development work or eight years of development work, we've gotten four, right? Four or five. Yeah. Here's the thing. Didn't Witcher 3 also have like a bunch of like yep super long narrative dlc that came out so there would have been people still working on it yes no that, i did forget about that they released two free dlc downloads which were like that was another 60 hours of content that they just gave it was incredible like witcher right. 3 is so fun and but that, yeah so that was people putting a ton of time into that too for right sure. and that came out 2016 yep uh so so people have years, this maybe yeah, so people have this image of they've been working on this night and day since 2013, which is not the case. No. They definitely have had a you know, fairly normal development cycle for this game mm -hmm. and bit off more than they could chew and was stuff they weren't familiar with and screwed everything up and released what they had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, have you, with your fancy new graphics card, gone back and had a look at Witcher 3 and see how it looks all fancy in 1440p? Because I know how hmm. much you loved the lighting in that game and how it I did. Looked. Yeah. Yep. Well, the sunsets in Witcher 3 are amazing. They're very pretty. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there's ray tracing. Uh, no, just... I, I, don't think, I don't know that there is either. But, but whatever they're doing, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. I should do that. No, I'll, I'll give that a shot. Report back. Cool. Blah. All right. So Cyberpunk dissected yes <laughs> again fun game 
both yeah. of us, I completed it, so I'm around going to finish it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ooh, I didn't want to talk about the... Uh, I'll talk about this, maybe. It's a little spoilery. Spoilery. That, it can wait till next week, then. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Cyberpunk podcast complete, I guess. <laughs> With a little si- with a little Final Fantasy VII in there. Yeah, kind of slipping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. Okay, well, uh, I think that's going to be it from us today. Then, thanks for joining us for another edition of the Falcon Paladin Hour and Cyberpunk rantings from both of us. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, and you can watch us live at Twitch.tv/Somicron every week if you're interested in stopping by and saying hello, like Lion Cat did, <laughs> and Weezer Blink. You can also find the show notes if there are any notes available. Mm. We've got a Patreon page for the podcast directly. It's true. And if you want to support it that way, you can. You can also find us on Spotify, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But all right. So that's going to be it from us today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Stay safe and stay healthy in this new year of 2021. And if you want to let us know your thoughts about Cyberpunk, hit me up at falconpaladin at gmail.com. Maybe we'll read your emails on air. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that'd mm-hmm. be pretty cool. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, depending on how it is, how cool it is. And yeah, until next time, as always, you take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.